that your, your name is often invoked. And when it is invoked, I always think, that seems like a really absurd accusation or um, uh, maybe just an outright lie. And, and, I'll, and I'll give an example. Um, oftentimes when people are talking about um, housing in Iowa City, your name will come up. And they'll say, well, you know, Karen Cubby took a bus, uh, like a Greyhound bus, to downtown <laughs> Chicago. And she stood in the middle of the south side and she said, come to Iowa City, we'll give you a free place to live. That's so absurd. It's, it, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> that I, makes I, me laugh. So I'm, I'm right in assuming that that's not true. You, yeah, you, that, you, <laughs> that, let me be very clear. I appreciate that people feel like I have such skills fundraising wherewithal and persuasive abilities that I could do all of that, that I could take a bus, go to the south side of Chicago, convince people to drop their lives and come to the Mecca of Iowa City because of something I said, but it's not true. I do support affordable housing programs on all kinds of level. I support subsidized housing on different levels. I'm a homeowner. I live in subsidized housing because I get to take a mortgage deduction on my federal taxes. I live in subsidized housing. So most people don't really define it that way, but I think it's important to be clear. So I support that federal deduction yeah. actually, because I think it's a good value. I support cities subsidized housing, Section 8 programs, family self-sufficiency programs. I support the nonprofits in the area, the Johnson County um, Housing Trust Fund, the Housing Fellowship, ACAP, uh, Habitat for Humanity, those are all great programs. I wish private developers were doing a better job at providing a greater variety of housing in our community. And I hope the City Council, who I hear is going to talk about inclusionary, a mandatory inclusionary zoning ordinance, does it. It's um, across the country with those types of ordinances that say X percent of housing needs to be um, in an affordable range, which is defined in the ordinance. Um, it, they only work if they're mandatory. And they're, the developers aren't doing it on their own. They're not gonna opt in. That's when government should intervene. When there's a community value that's not being met in any other way, that is an appropriate role for government. And in this instance, I think government should take it and do it, and we should have done it 15 years ago. You're presently very involved organizing on that issue here in I have, Not in the past year or so, but I, I was part of a group that were odd bedfellows to most people. It was many of those nonprofit housing um, organizations, uh, First Christian Church, this group FAIR that I belong to that works on housing issues, and many private developers, and including the Home Builders Association. So it's people, people uh, don't usually see me hanging out with. I'm usually kind of fighting with some of those folks. <laughs> but we decided, let's talk about this. It's not happening at the government level, so let's talk about it as private organizations and see if we can come up with some areas of consensus because if Glenn Siders from, from Southgate Development and Karen Cubby from FAIR and everybody in between can agree on something, maybe that's what we should be doing. <laughs> now, then and we, is, is that the community value, right? Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. So we came up with this whole big statement and really nothing's been done with it, and it's been a couple of years. So that's kind of disappointing, where you have this great process of, of community stakeholders who are, are opposed in the past, saying, we're really trying to work hard together for the good of the community, and we want something done, and then, nothing, then it sits there in committee for a couple of years. I put out to the community, what question should I ask Karen Cubby? And um, someone said, well, ask Karen if she would ever run for city council again. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say never, but I'm having too much fun doing what I'm doing, and I'm too busy. And the beauty of being on council and understanding the 15,000 issues and being able to pick one or two and really focus and maybe be more effective is really a beautiful thing. I mean, I think of the year I got off city council, I was co-chair with Mark Martin for the new public library for the bond referendum, 18.5 million. We won, we won big. That building's there, it's, t it's used like someplace four times our size. 
that feels like accomplishment and great community satisfaction on a daily basis. I'm a big library user. So, you know, I can, I can plug in when I have time and can focus and feel like I can be a little more effective. Um, in the meantime, I've been very interested in recruiting other people to run and to help provide them some skills and support to do so well. Um, I have to say right now, there's I, I'm putting out a call right here, right now, mm -hmm. for the uh, progressives who are interested in local government, who want to get trained, who want to be involved, who want to run, to get a hold of me. I would love to work with some people who have an interest in these issues. Imagine in the, in the process of running for public office, someone looks at their values and says, how can I incorporate this? into my run for office. And you've created training packets and traveled around the country to, to teach people yes. how to run for public office. Yes. This curriculum that I developed, it's a three-day workshop, and it helps people live out their values within the campaign, not only in the issues that they choose, but in the materials, if they're interested in ecology and environmental sustainability, why would you use slick paper that's non-recyclable or very expensive to produce on the front end or energy intensive on the front end? So. Um, it's really difficult. A lot of people who share my political views aren't very organized. <laughs> and, and it can be overwhelming. The mechanics of campaigning can be very overwhelming. So I've broken it down into little steps. And then we practice skills. Public speaking is not something, people are very afraid of public speaking. And so learning to public speak, practicing how to use your words well. Because maybe a few people in the world are born articulate, but not very many of us. So it's just a matter of practice. And so in this training, we practice public speaking. We practice how to create an organization that will be functional throughout the campaign and hopefully produce a winning candidate. Well, now you're a downtown business owner. You're involved with the Downtown Association. Um, but I understand that you've put together another group that works within the Downtown Association. Yeah, actually, uh, Ratu from Textiles and Nikki from RSVP uh, got a hold of me and said, we really need to get together as retailers. And we decided that there are a lot of people in the Retail Caucus who, uh, that's what we called it now, that, that really wanted to exclusively work with other retailers and not with the larger Downtown Association. Um, but there's lots of communication. So from that has come a new logo for the Downtown. Uh, working with the Downtown Association and energy from the Retail Caucus, we have a new Downtown Iowa City website that has events and stores and links, and it's really highly functional, and we hope it will be the to-go place for anyone who wants to know what's happening in downtown Iowa City. And have you addressed any other concerns with, with this group? Um, some people still don't like to come downtown uh, because of perceptions about parking and safety, and I just want to remind people there are hundreds and hundreds of parking spaces. You may not be able to park right in front of the place you want, but the ramps are so convenient, especially the ramps where you pay when you leave, because that way you can park and you can be at your leisure downtown. You don't have to worry about a ticket. And I'll give you an hour of parking. I have yet to drive downtown and turn back around because I can't find a place to You're park. There. One of the things I'm very excited about in this particular business is that we provide lots of education. And as a trained educator, I really value high quality instruction. It brings a new level of skills for people. They can combine skills. And one of the things I've started to do in the last year is I'm making beads. And that's really fun to take a rod of glass and to melt it and form it into this structure and then put it together into a piece of jewelry is pretty amazing. You worked as a potter for many, many years. Yes, and, and there are good connections because the glaze on the outside of the clay is really liquid glass that gets heated up and solidified, so it's a glass coating. When you're making beads, are you thinking about all these other parts of your life? Well, they're all connected. Sometimes I'm making something specifically for a nonprofit. This place has kind of brought it all together for you. Yeah. Well, Karen, thank you so much for yeah, sitting down and talking with me. Yeah, thanks for having me.
Community. 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 Boys. Nah, 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 nah. I do what city is. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I do what city is. I do what city is. Rap,